destroy this temple Jesus said And I will rebuild it in three days Yes, he was showing none is greater than me When it comes to construct Hello again brothers and sisters Welcome to gospelcross.net uh, uh, It's uh, Brother Richard again today I would like to thank you uh, for the time you are taking to watch uh, our video so today uh, I'm bringing you another man of God and he's gonna introduce himself. We're gonna talk with him uh, about a very, very important subject which I would uh, request each and one of you to follow carefully. We will speak uh, about the Lamb's Book of Life and the Book of Life. We would like to see if there are two books or what is behind her. So I've got this uh, privilege to welcome the pastor. Buena. Hello, pastor. God bless you. Amen. Bless you too. Uh, could you introduce yourself, pastor, please? Yeah, my name is uh, Brother Whisper Buena. I'm a pastor of uh, the Spoken Word Ministries Church. Um, we, we're based in North London. Um, now we, we have our church in a place that's called Walter Mabi. Um, Maybe just to give a big background of our church, we started here in the UK in 1999 and the Lord has been gracious to us and we've been growing ever since and we thank the Lord for that. Thank you, brother. So, uh, my first question would be, uh, what do you understand by the Book of Life and the Lamb's uh, Book of Life? Okay. Um, <clears throat> This, this, is a very, this is a very deep subject. Um, you would recall um, there was a time that I preached on this subject, and I guess this is the reason why you, you wanted me to talk about it. Um, I preached on a message, the mysterious book, um, you know, the mysterious book of redemption. And in there I touched on the book of life and on the Lamb's book of life. Now. In terms of the way I approach the message, I believe I don't have a message. I believe I don't have a ministry. My ministry is just to echo what Brother Branham said. So whenever I preach, I just refer people back to what Brother Branham said. Um, and that's what I'm going to do in answering your question here. Now, you want to know how I understand or what my understanding of the difference between the Lamb's Book of Life and um, the Book of Life is. So I'm just going to read some quotations and explain yes. as I go through. Thank you. Um, so for people to be able to follow, I have to tell you exactly what quotation I'm reading from. And um, hopefully I'll also give you the paragraph so that you can go back into the message and you can check these things out. Let me start by reading what the Prophet of God says in the Bridge Message, 630317. And this is um, in paragraph 39. The prophet of God says here, Now, but it is a book, a mysterious book. It's a book of redemption. We'll get into that a little while. And we know that this book of redemption will not be thoroughly understood. So the prophet tells us that when we come to this book, it is a mysterious book. And it is a book that will not be thoroughly understood. So when it comes to the book of redemption, which is where you know, we, 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 we find the book of life, the Lamb's book of life, they are all uh, talking about the same book. But when we get into that book, the prophet says, it is a mysterious book. And because it is a mysterious book, every mystery has got to be revealed. But we're glad that we're living in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when every mystery must be made known. And I believe that the prophet made this mystery known. But I want to highlight that it is a mysterious book. And that's why in some place it looks like it's one book, in other places it looks like it's two different books. But in terms of us getting to understand exactly what it looks like, we've got to get back to the prophet, because he's the only one that can give us an answer. Right? Yes, please. Now. There are two schools of thought. The first school of thought says, these are two separate books. 
And then the other school of thought says, this is one book. Now, these two schools of thought, they both come from the message. But the question is, how far have you gone to looking into the subject matter? And by the grace of God, I just want to share with you what the prophet says and where these two schools of thought come from. And then we can also find what was the definite conclusion of the prophet in terms of the subject matter. The school of thought that a lot of people run with comes from the message, the invisible union of the bride of Christ, 65, 11, 25. And I'm going to read from paragraph 223. The prophet says here, yeah, now your old book is gone with your old union. Now your name in your old book has been transferred. Now you say, do you mean to tell me that my old book, God put it in the sea of forgetfulness. You stand perfectly before God. Now your name is now in the new book, not the book of life, but the Lamb's book of life, what the Lamb redeemed. Not the old book, your natural union, but your new bride. Hallelujah. And he goes on and he says, your new life is in the Lamb's book of life, your marriage certificate. Hallelujah. Where your true eternal gem from the beginning takes hold. Now you are not only forgiven, but you are justified. Glory, justified. Romans 5.1 said, yeah, Romans 5.1 said, therefore being justified by faith. He also goes on in paragraph 3 or 4, and he says, there is your two books. So immediately, it gives the impression there are two different books. Because the prophet says, there is your two books. One of them is the Lamb's book of life. Your name on there is predestinated on there. It can't go, because you can no more take that away than nothing. See? Because it was foreordained to be there. But the regular book of life can take that off at any time. See, you don't repent, it's off anyway, because you're going to stand the judgment. The bride don't even stand the judgment, goes in the rapture. So, just by listening to what the prophet says, there is your two books. One of them is the Lamb's book of life. It gives you the impression that we've got two separate books. Now, this message Invisible Union was preached November the 25th, 1965. And he preached this in Shreveport, Louisiana. And this was on a Thursday. The very next day, to the same group of people on the 26th of November, in the message, Works is Faith Expressed, to the same congregation, to the same audience, the very next day, the prophet comes back and he touches again on the subject. And I want to read what the prophet then says here, because this is where we begin to get clarity in terms of what he was talking about the previous day. He says in paragraph 120 of the message, Works is Faith Expressed, 65, 11, 26. The prophet says, the Baptists believe there is two separate books. And in one way, it is two separate books. And in another way, it isn't two separate books. I'm two separate people. I'm body and soul and spirit, three separate people, but only one makes me as a being. Now, that makes the subject very interesting. Because he's speaking to the same congregation that he spoke to the previous day. Now he's giving us a bit more clarity on what he was talking about the previous day. And the prophet says, the Baptist believers, there's two separate books. Now we're not Baptists, we message believers. Right? So we can't be classified together with the Baptists because we message believers. Yeah? And the prophet says, it's the Baptists that believe that it's two separate books. And then he goes on to explain and he says, I I'm two separate people. I'm body, soul, spirit, three separate people. But only one makes me as a being. And then he says in paragraph 121, there is only a real one book of life. Now, this is clarifying what he spoke about the previous day. And he comes and he says, there is only real one book of life. Now, we'll come back to this quotation. In the Sadistian Church Age, 266-1, 
somewhere in the middle of that paragraph he says, Some also say that this book of life is not the Lamb's book of life. But as usual, when one regards a verse superficially, he comes up with a superficial understanding. Now, we don't want to end up with a superficial understanding. We want, thus says the Lord. We want what God, what, what God wants us to know. Now, he says again, 267-1, Sadistian Church Age. He says, to begin with, there is no basis for the claims that the Lamb's book of life is not the same as the book of life. The book of life might be called the Lamb's book of life, or Christ's book of life, or even thy book and book of the living. Only names are written in it. So the prophet then gives us the array of names. And all these are referring to exactly the same book. So he says it can be called the Lamb's book of life, Christ's book of life, thy book, and the book of the living, all of them referring to the same. Now we must understand that the prophet was a biblical prophet. He would never teach anything that is outside of the Bible. He came to restore us back to the Bible. So whenever the prophet speaks, he's taking us back to the scriptures. Now, to confirm that this is what he was teaching, we go to Revelations chapter 13. Revelations chapter 13 verse 8. The Bible says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, the beast, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. So here, the names are written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Now, Revelation chapter 17, verse 8, the scripture says, The beast that thou sowest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Now again, we're talking of names written from the foundation of the world. But Revelation 17.8, it just calls it the book of life. Revelation 13.8, it calls it the book of life of the Lamb, which is the Lamb's book of life. So according to these two verses, the Lamb's book of life, and the book of life are exactly the same because this is where we find names written from the foundation of the world and brother Branham says when it comes to this book to this book only names are written in it right revelations 20 12 and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Then the prophet comments, Sadistian Church Age, 267-1, you can see that though there are other books mentioned, there is always the reference to one book containing names. In the Revelation it is called the Lamb's Book of Life or the Book of Life. So whenever there is mention or reference to names, we speak of this one book. It is either called the Lamb's Book of Life or the Book of Life. Questions and answers on the seals. 630324 in the morning. This is 1127. Brother Brown, is the Lamb's Book of Life and the Book of Life the same book? Now this is questions and answers on the seals. Yeah. Sure. See? Cause that's where all redemption is wrought in this book. There are names. You say, well, our names was put on the Lamb's Book of Life, Brother Branham. I got, I, I got it put on the other night. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You just found out it was on there the other night. Because their names were written before the foundation of the world. See, it's all the same book. So the prophet clarifies it here. A question, direct question, is asked to the prophet. And the prophet gives a direct answer. And he says, sure. And then at the end here he says, it's all the same book. Wax is faith expressed. Which is the one that I read earlier on. The one that was preached after Invisible Union. I said I'm going to come back to it. Now the prophet says, the Baptists believe there is two separate books. 
And he says, in one way, it is two separate books. Yeah? Now, paragraph 121, I will now continue from where I left. He says, there is only a real one book of life. Like there was one gem of the wheat that come up through the stalk and went through the tassel and out through the husk and into the wheat all the way along. There, you say, now, that's wheat laying there. Now, I want you to catch what the prophet is saying. Now, in explaining this book, he then takes us to the type of the wheat. Of the wheat. And the prophet says, you put one seed into the ground. And when you did, what came up? Yeah? And then he begins to type this. Let me just carry on a bit. It isn't the wheat, it's the stalk. But together, it's the wheat. See, it's the wheat because it's all one stalk. But the wheat is what you're talking about. The grain at the end of it. The others was a carrier. It must perish. And that's why one place sounds like you can have your name taken off the Lamb's Book of Life. And the other place, you can't do it. So that's where it is. It's all in that great revelation there, which was made known during the time of the seven seals. Why is it how some people can't believe it? Now, the prophet gives us a clue on how this book looks like it's two different books. And remember he says, it, I am three different people, body, soul, spirit. spirit. And he says, but there is only one that manifests me. Yeah? Now, he says, in one way it looks like I am different people. Now, then he takes it to the wheat as well. And he says, when you look at the field of wheat, now, let's take it when it begins to germinate. You take a seed and you go and plant it in the ground. When it comes out from there, there is a stalk that is out there, right? The day the farmer walks into the field and he sees it all green, what does the farmer say? He says, I have a field of wheat. Of wheat, yeah. But you ask him, show me the wheat, he'll show you a green stalk. After a little while, that wheat develops and there is a tassel. The farmer still says, I have a field of wheat. After a little while, it develops and there is a husk there. And the farmer does not change his language, I have a field of wheat. After a little while, everything dries down. And the farmer goes and he harvests everything. Yeah? And he throws away the tassel, the husk, and every other thing, and he takes the seed. And the farmer still says, I have wheat. And that's why the prophet says here, it's all the same thing. But it depends on what portion of the wheat we are talking about. So, bringing this now to the Lamb's Book of Life, because remember, he's saying this in connection with the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, bringing this now to the Lamb's Book of Life, he then made it very clear when he now put together the Church Ages book. Now, I might just say something here. There's some people that believe that the Church Ages book um, was, was really not Brother Branham's book, but according to the record that we know. Yeah, people think that it has been written by somebody else, so the thoughts inside are not from Brother Branham's. That is not correct as per the facts that we get out of them that were with the prophet. Brother Branham preached the Revelation series, right? And he said, I'm going to preach this so that I can get the inspiration to write a book. And then, after he preached that, then he got Brother Van to put together the book. But the way it was actually happening is that Brother Branham gave him, obviously Brother Ver was working from the script of the preaching, right? But Brother Branham then started editing that book. And from the time that he preached on the Revelation series to 1965, Brother Branham was editing that book. So he edited it. And he added in the doctrinal issues that he wanted to put in there. And he finally said, now I have a book. Now, these are facts that can be confirmed by the voice of God, by the people that walked with Brother Branham. And they will tell you that this is what happened. 
In fact, we also have event tabs where Brother Branham was actually giving the instruction. You know, this thing that you wrote like this, change it to be like this. This thing that you wrote like this, change it to be like this. The, the, the messages that Brother Branham was recording, editing the church judges book. So that's Brother Branham's book. Now, and to show that it's Brother Branham's book, whatever he, he, he says, especially about this subject that I'm talking about, it also runs with what he said in Invisible Union. It also runs with what he says in Faith is Works Expressed, which was preached the next day. It also runs with what he said in Questions and Answers on the Seals. It is all one consistent message. Now, he gives clarity in terms of this wheat structure and how it relates to the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen? So, when he now gives the clarity in terms of how we end up with two different books, yeah, or how we end up with one book rather, which people regard as two different books, he says, it is all in the structure of the book. Right? What do I mean it is in the structure of the book? In the church age, it's Sadistian church age. The prophet, this is paragraph 279-3. He says, now let us go another step. But before we do, let us review our case thus far. First of all, we know most assuredly that the purpose of God stands in election. It was purpose in himself. It was God's purpose to bring forth a people like unto himself. That would be a wed bride. She was chosen before the foundation of the world in him. She was foreknown and beloved before she was ever brought forth during the ages upon the earth. She was redeemed by his blood and can never come into condemnation. She can never be in the judgment because sin cannot be imputed unto her. Romans 4.8 Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. But indeed, she shall be with him in his throne of judgment, judging the world and even angels. Then the prophet says, her name, each of her members, was written in a section of the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. Now, I want to highlight this part. Her name was written in a section. section. So now we begin to understand that when we get into the Lamb's Book of Life, it has got sections. Within the book. Within one book. one book. Remember, he gave it the example of a wheat. It has got sections as wheat. It's got the stalk, it's got the tassel, it's got the husk, and it's got the seed. The seed itself. And he said, this is exactly what this book looks like. It has got sections within it. Then the prophet says... Her name, each of her members, was written in a section of the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. Now, we can get into the sections. What are the sections that we find in this Lamb's Book of Life, yes, which is the same as the Book of Life? The section, right. So, section number one. It is the bride section. Right? Now, let me read. So, We've just read here that their names were written in a section of the Lamb's Book of Life. Right? This is the bride that we're talking about. So we know that the bride is in a certain section. Right? Let me just go back here. And it says, are written in a section of the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. Right? Now, we go to the next one. It says, secondly, there is another class. Their names are also in the book of life, and they will come up in the second resurrection. Such are the foolish virgins and the righteous, as are spoken of in Matthew 25. In this class also are those who do not worship the beast, or become involved in the antichrist system, but die for their faith, even though they are not in the bride, not having been born again. But they will come up in the second resurrection and go into eternal life. So we find then that, there is a second class, or a second section, which is for those that are like the foolish virgins, right? Though their names are in the book of life, but they are not in the lamb section of that book of life. So they are not in the same section as those that are in the brain. So do you mean the foolish virgin are on the same book, but in a different section? That's exactly what the prophet is saying here. Yeah. That we have different sections. So these ones, yeah, we have the bride section, which is those whose names 
are in that particular section, right? Those are the ones that are born again. Those are the ones that are sealed with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Those are the ones that are the wise virgins. Now, when you come to the second section, the prophet says their names are also in the book of life and they will come up in the second resurrection. Such are the foolish virgins and the righteous as are spoken of in Matthew 25. So they are in the book of life, but they are in a different section. Now, why are they in a different section? Because these will have to go through the tribulation. But they will come in the second resurrection, in the second resurrection and go into eternal life. So they still have eternal life, right? But they are in a different section. Now, when I preach this, you know, here I'm just, you know, talking and uh, um, I don't have the tools to really show everything, but I've preached messages on this. But when I preach this, I kind of like, I don't know whether the people can see it there, yeah? But um, I kind of like put it into sections to actually show where the sections are. Now, this is the second section. And then the third section, we get it again, so this in church age. The prophet says, thirdly, they are the borderline Christians, such as we saw in Israel coming out of Egypt. These had their names in the book of life, and their works were written in the books. These, having failed to obey God and being void of the Spirit, though even the signs and wonders were amongst them, will have their names removed from the book of life. Amongst this group will be the ones like Judas, who, though eternally void of the Spirit, but are religious, who have manifestations in their lives, and though on the books were not elected in him, such also as Balaam would be in that group. This is the third section. And in this third section, this is where now you find those who are called but are not elected. And these are the ones whose names shall be blotted out. So the names would have been there, but they shall be blotted out. And because God by foreknowledge knew that this is where they will end up, they are written in another section of the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, Fourth and finally are those whose names have never been or will ever be written on the books. Such are found in Revelation 13.8 and Revelation 17.8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So there are others whose names are not even written at all. And this is where you find your serpent seed. They're not part and parcel of the program of God. So you can see now the four sections that you find in this book of life. So it is exactly the same book, Brother Branham says, questions and answers on the seals. We are not Baptists. We don't want to take this superficially. We want to get, thus says the Lord. And I believe this is, thus says the Lord. Let me ask you a quick question on that, because all questions I had on this subject you've already uh, talked about it. So, uh, my question was, how would we say uh, concerning the book that Adam lost, is it still the same book? And we also see in uh, an open book in Revelation 10, is it also still the same book or is it a different book? It is exactly the same book. This is the book of redemption. Brother Brown says, this book of redemption when Adam lost it, it could not go into the hands of Satan. So when Adam forfeited that book, it went right back into the hands of the original owner. And we now find it in Revelation chapter 5. It is in the hands of him that is sitting on the throne. And it is the book that is sealed with seven seals. And it is the book of redemption. Now, what is to be redeemed? It's those whose names are written in that book. And then you can understand why Brother Branham says only names are written in that book. Because it's the book of redemption. So, it's exactly the same book. So, uh, we do understand that uh, the pastor has explained uh, it is exactly uh, the same book. So, uh, do you have any word to just finish this uh, interview again? All I can say is the answers are in the message. We have a prophet, and that prophet was a thorough prophet. 
And the next thing I want to say, he was a word-based prophet. He took us back to the word. So, whenever we have any question, let's get back to the text. Because the answers are lying on the text. But many times what we fail to do is to go deep enough. Is to actually follow the subject matter and find out exactly what the prophet taught. But the answers are right there in the message. What do you think of uh, gospelcross.net? Um, apart from, you know, uh, coming to, to the interview, um, I'll be honest, it's not one that I followed, you know, uh, to really know what, what goes on behind. But um, I believe your objective is to try and get some questions answered and project them to the world and in the process spread the gospel. And I believe that's the mandate that we're given. And so on that basis, I'll say, praise the Lord, you're doing a good work. Amen. Thank you, uh, Pastor. Uh, we are so very grateful to you because we've taken uh, this time, your precious time to explain all those things. So uh, I think for those who have questions, you will just have to email us. We can send them to the pastors if they need more quotations on this. So uh, we'll do our best to send that to them. Thank you uh, for me and you till we meet again in another panel. Thank you. Bye. God bless you. Bye.